This is interesting, says Mortarian. This is the memory you hide in? You went to see Father. You want him to protect you now? How touching. Gilliman, still tongueless, lipless, wordless, could only relive what he had seen. Trajan Valorous bade the great doors open. His words were a jumble, broken by time. His movements a fan of overlapping images in terrible shades of gold. But when the gates opened and the light came out, that was pure. Mortarian gasped in discomfort, and Gilliman felt a little bit of hope. He remembered. He relived. He had gone to see what his father had become. He had spent subjective years lost in the warp to come to Terra, only to find an empire of ruin before his eyes, all building to this fateful moment. There were wordless screams of the psychers drained to feed his terrible majesty. There were visions of gods, demigods, and a brown-skinned man of calm expression, clad in skins, clad in mail, clad in clothes of all colors and bewildering variety, clad in an armor of gold. He had seen many faces, all proud, all betrayed. He saw Malkador in him, the first regent. He saw his brothers. Millions of ideas battered him, memories from tens of thousands of years of existence, random, circular trains of thoughts, obsessions, predictions, and fears. So many voices, all the same, all different, none coherent. He saw a dusty room, titanic in scale, crammed with machinery of awful purpose, the living dying in relay to sustain this monstrous thing. The center was a machine of gold, shrouded in the dust of broken dreams. A skull-faced cadaver, all life gone, perched within its seat. By then the vision flickered, and he saw a king of infinite power, resting while upon his throne to think, only lost to his subjects for a while, and when done with his meditation, he would rise, and he would rule justly. He saw a tired man who would be his father, giving him grave counsel that he could not hear, telling him what he must do. Again his view changed, and he saw an evil force to rival the great powers of chaos. He saw sorrow, triumph, failure, loss, and potential. There was no one face among all the faces, no one voice but a chorus, a cacophony. The Emperor's presence was a hammer blow to his soul, a tremendous scouring of being. He could not stand before it, and he fell to his knees, though Valorous stood by his side as if nothing had happened. He was in the dust of the Corpse King's court. He was before a resplendent emperor for all the ages. Father, he said, and when he said that word, it was the last time he had meant it. Father, I have returned. Gilliman forced himself to look up into the pillar of light, the screaming of souls, the empty-eyed skull, the impassive god, the old man, yesterday's savior. What must I do? Help me, Father. Help me save them. In the present, in the past, he felt Mortarian's wordless presence at his side, and he felt his fallen brother's horror. He looked at the Emperor of Mankind, and he could not see. Too much, too bright, too powerful. The unreality of the being before him stunned him to his core. A hundred different impressions, all false, yet all true, raced through his mind. He could not remember what his father had looked like, before, and Gilliman forgot nothing. And then the thing, that terrible, awful thing upon the throne, looked upon him. My son, it said. Thirteen, it said. Lord of Aldramar. Savior. Hope. Failure. Disappointment. Liar. Thief. Betrayer. Gilliman. He heard these all at once, yet he didn't hear them at all. The Emperor spoke and did not speak. The very idea of words seemed ridiculous, the concept of them a grievous harm against the equilibrium of time and being. Robut Gilliman, the raging tempest, spoke his name, and it was as the violence of a dying sun raining down upon him. Gilliman, 
Gilliman, Gilliman. The name echoed down the winds of eternity, never ceasing, never reaching its intended point. The sensation of many minds reached out to Gilliman, violating his sense as they tried to communicate. But then one mind seemed to come from the many, a raw, unbound power, and gave wordless commands to go out and save what they had built together. To destroy what they had made, to save his brothers, to kill them. Contradictory impulses, all impossible to disobey, all the same, all different. Futures many and terrible raced through his mind. The results of all these things, should he do any, all or none of them. Father, he cried. Thoughts battered him. A son, not a son. A thing, a name, not a name. A number, a tool, a product. A grand plan in ruins. An ambitious, unrealized plan. Information, too much information, coursed through Gilliman, stars and galaxies, entire universes, races older than time, things too terrifying to be real, eroding his being like a storm, in full space, a knife-edged gullies into badlands. Please, father, he begged. Father, not a father. Thing, 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 the mind said. Apotheosis, victory, defeat, choose, it said. Fate, future, past, renewal, despair, decay. And then there seemed to be a focusing of a great will exerting itself, not for the final time, but nearly for the final time. A sense of strength failing, a sense of ending. Far away, he heard arcane machines whine and screech, closing, close to collapse. And then the clamor of screams of dying psychers that underpinned everything in that horrific room, riding higher in pitch and intensity. Gilliman, the voices overlaid, overlapped, became one. Gilliman had seen a fleeting memory of a sad face that he had seen too much, and a burden it could only barely give him. Gilliman, hear me. My last loyal son, my pride, my greatest triumph. How those words burned him, worse than the poisons of Mortarian, worse than the sting of failure. They were not a lie, not entirely. They were conditional. My last tool, my last hope. A final drawing in power, a thought expelled like a dying breath. It felt to Gilliman like his mind had exploded. There was a blinding flash, and the king and the corpse and the old man, overlaid and overlapped, dead and alive, divine and mortal, all judged him. Gilliman staggered from the throne room. Valorous stared into the heart of the emperor's light unflinchingly, and then it turned away, and he followed. Gilliman could not be sure of anything that had happened. Every time he remembered it, it was different. Was any of it real? He did not know. He would never know.